guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach. In this video, we are continuing our beginner dog training series and we are talking about chewing. Whether that is chewing on your table legs or chewing on the couch, chewing on their, their bed, maybe chewing up your shoes, whatever it may be, we are talking about chewing. And when puppies are going through teething especially, this is a prime time for your dog to chew on things that you maybe don't want them to chew on. It happens, right? And we're gonna be talking in this video about what we can do to stop it from happening. So real quick before we get started, again, my name is Jessica, I'm the Furry Family Coach. I'm a positive dog trainer and pet parent coach. And on this channel, we talk about all things dog training, dog behavior, canine enrichment, canine nutrition, and I do throw some things in here every once in a while about cats because I am a pet parent coach after all, and I do have cats of my own. So if any of that is up your alley, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. When you do, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Also, real quick, before we get started in this video, you're probably here because you clicked on the video because you're having problems with your dog chewing on things, but I highly recommend that you check the link in the description for the beginner dog training series playlist and start from the beginning. There is a reason that I've done all of these videos in this particular order. So I highly recommend you start from the beginning and work your way back up to chewing, which is this video right here, right now. So let's talk about chewing and your dog chewing because we know we don't want them to be doing it, right? <laughs> okay, so the first thing I wanna say about chewing, and this is gonna be incredibly unpopular, and I understand that it is, but it's the truth. And we need the truth. We need to be told the truth, even when it's hard to hear. If your dog is chewing up things in your, in your home that you do not want them to be chewing on, maybe it's a shoe, maybe it's your table leg, maybe it's the couch, whatever it may be, that your dog is chewing on that you don't want them to be chewing on, here's the hard truth. You are not managing your dog or puppy's environment well enough. Again, puppy training is so much about managing your dog's environment that, and, and people overlook this so much. I would almost go so far as to say that puppy training is primarily about controlling your puppy's environment. And even if you adopt an older dog, we still, it, the time frame may be shorter that we have to do it, possibly, but managing the environment that we allow our dogs to have access to is really going to be key in so many things. It's going to be key in them learning the actions, the behaviors that you expect out of them is going to be key for their confidence, right? It's going to, if you, if you take someone and you throw them into a stadium, right? Like a, a professional baseball stadium and you're just like, here you go, go on. There are no maps. There's nothing. I'm not going to be here to hold your hand through a, a child. Imagine taking a two-year-old child putting them in a, in a professional baseball stadium, you're not holding their hand, you're not providing them any sort of map, though they probably couldn't read one anyway <laughs> at two years old, and you're saying, here you go, figure it out, and I mean, what do you expect them to do? This is where your puppy is, right? Like, your home is like a wonderland to them, and they don't know how to navigate it without your help, without your assistance. So managing your dog or puppy's environment is so key to getting puppy training right, or even dog training. If you are, if you've just adopted a dog and, and you're bringing them into your home for the first time, we don't want to give them full access to the house. So the best way to manage your dog or puppy's environment is very literally to attach them to you. So have them on lead, have them on a leash and attach that leash to you. And you know, you can have it in your hand or around your wrist if that's what you wanna do. You can also get a, uh, a hook and attach it to your belt buckle or attach it directly into your belt, like loop your belt through it. Whatever is going to be easiest for you, 
literally that's going to be the easiest thing for you and your dog to do is attach your dog to you that way they are not having access to anything you don't want them to have access to and you can better manage and monitor their behavior you can shape the behavior that you want to see in your dog so if your dog is going for something then you can redirect them right that this is the key if they do grab even when you're managing your dog's environment they can come across things that you may not want them to have which is why a leave it cue is so so important and we actually started, I mean, it was very, very early on in the beginner dog training series, uh, teaching a leave it cue. And just because you, you know, went through and, and you moved on to another cue doesn't mean you need to stop teaching the leave it cue or any other cue for that matter. The only way to get good at it is to practice it in different environments with different objects. They may, you, they may be really good at leaving a toy right because this is what you've practiced with but then they grab a piece of food off the ground and they don't understand that that behavior transitions you have to practice and practice and practice and practice in so many different environments with so many different objects to really you and your dog get really really good at it so managing your dog's environment is going to be key um, even if, and, and when your dog does get a hold of something you don't want them to have, the best thing you can do is redirect their attention to something else. Now, I will say uh, there is one caveat to this, right? If, if something that your dog has gotten a hold of is dangerous to them, then you absolutely do want to get it away from them by any means possible. <laughs> uh, almost any means. I mean, yeah. Depending on what the object is, you, you're going to have to assess the level of risk versus, you know, what you're doing to get the object away from your dog. But, I mean, if my dog is some, has somehow come into contact with rat poison, I'm going to do any and everything I possibly can to get that out of their mouth or away from them and rush them to the vet, obviously, as quickly as I can. But I'm going to do everything I can to get that, even if I have to yank it out of their mouth i'm going to now if it's a toy that you're training with then no you, you're not going to yank this out of your dog's mouth you're going to offer them something of greater value to exchange for that toy that you're training with or that you're working with or maybe it's a shoe of yours that they have grabbed and you're going to go and say you know what this is your favorite toy you give me that shoe i'm going to give you this toy and we're going to we're going to trade for this right we're going to exchange for this and that is going to be your uh, best bet for teaching your dog to to stop chewing on objects that you don't want them to be chewing on is to redirect them to something that is okay for them to chew on. Now, this isn't a chew toy by any means. It's just my dog loves stuffed animals with squeakers in them, so this is what I had on hand to grab. But uh, redirect them to an appropriate chew toy. That is going to be okay. And if your dog is going through teething, then oh my goodness, yes, you need to have all kinds of chew toys on hand to rotate through to allow your dog to alleviate that discomfort that, that's going on in their jaw because they are going to be seeking out things to chew on. So definitely have a stash of chew toys with you at all times that you can um, easily uh, exchange for your dog. If you have your dog attached to you and you happen to walk into your closet with your dog to put some clothes away and they're eyeing that shoe, I hope you have a toy <laughs> with you to exchange with your dog so that you can train and you can teach them that no, this behavior is not okay, but this behavior is okay, right? We never want to provide a no without providing a yes, right? So. It's just like with people, you can't say, you can't tell someone that they, no, this is not allowed, no, you can't do this, without providing an alternative opportunity. And it, I mean, it just works so much better. And I, I understand that in life, we're not always provided alternative opportunities. However, in dog training, this is exactly what we need to be doing. We need to be providing alternative opportunities for our dogs that are preferred for us and even higher value for them. This is going to be how you train your dog to stop chewing on things that you don't want them to be chewing on is by redirecting them to things that that are appropriate for them to chew on. But managing your dog's environment is going to be key here. So if your dog does have something that you don't want them to be chewing on, 
how are you going to get their attention? I mean, you, you have to get their attention, right? There's, there are a number of different ways that you can grab your dog's attention. You can start luring them with something of higher value, maybe a, a yummy treat or a piece of boiled chicken or something like that, something that you have on hand, maybe one of their treats that they absolutely love, something that is going to be of higher value to lure them away from whatever it is you don't want them messing with. You can also make really upbeat vocalizations. So maybe your dog is into something and you walk around the corner and catch them because I mean, they should be, if you're having this issue, you should be managing their environment. But let's just say you walk around the corner and find your dog into something they shouldn't be into and you decide, you don't have anything on you to lure them with, you can make some upbeat vocalizations, meaning you can come around the corner and say, oh, Max, hey, what are you doing? Come here, come here, come here. And initiate maybe play or initiate um, just getting their attention onto you off of whatever it is they're interested in. One, you may shock them and they may jump up and run away from whatever it was they were doing to begin with. But also we are uh, providing an, an alternative, right? They are involved in something over here, but me, I'm over here saying, yay, Max, hey, come here, what are you doing, buddy? I wanna play right? And that really shrill, upbeat voice that I just made. And um, so now I am the alternative from whatever it is they're doing. I'm the alternative. And that's a wonderful thing because we want to be more valuable in our dog's environment than anything else. And there are so many ways in which we can become more valuable in their environment, but the, that's, that's for other videos. So that's another really great way that you can distract or redirect your dog's attention off of something they should not be uh, messing with back onto you or back onto something more appropriate. I do want to throw in here, and if you have been following along in the beginner dog training series, this should be pretty evident to you at this point, but if for some reason you've clicked on this video and you have not gone through the entire beginner dog training series, and even though I've already told you to start from the beginning, you know, that's what it is. If you just want to watch this video, that's okay. So I want to throw in here that we should never, ever yell, punish, hit, hurt. We should never do any of that with our dog. So even if you catch them in the act of doing some sort of behavior that you find inappropriate, then your dog is doing the best they can with the information they have been provided. Their teeth may be hurting and they have found something that looks really good to chew on that's going to alleviate that discomfort. If you haven't been teaching them, if you haven't been managing their environment and providing them with positive alternatives, that's the best they can do. So if you stumble upon them doing something you don't want them to be doing, yelling at them is not the answer. It is not going to help. It is not going to teach your dog anything. Yanking something out of their mouth is not going to teach them anything. Uh, if this is the case, if this is something that's happening with, with your dog, then really uh, you are the one that has not done their job properly and we need to start from start from the beginning, which is why I say start from the very first video in the beginner dog training series playlist. That playlist is linked in the description below. So I highly recommend you start from the beginning if you haven't already. And so yeah, yelling, screaming, hitting, punishing, slapping, whatever is completely inappropriate. Do not do this with your dog. It is not going to teach them anything um, other than to fear you, other than to not trust you. If you and your dog don't have trust, you have nothing. Again, pulling something away from your dog or out of their mouth teaches them nothing. Providing them an alternative and allowing them the opportunity to choose that alternative, that is where learning comes in. All right, so that is really how we deal with chewing in puppies and dogs. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. Also, I wanna know why you clicked on this video. Have you gone through the entire beginner dog training series? Are you working along with me through the series? Let me know in the comments below. Or if you just clicked on this one video and you have decided you are not going through the whole series, let me know that too. I would love to know what's going on with you and your dog. The best way to do that is by joining the group. There is a link in the description below, so definitely check that out. Join the family, join the group. That way you can share with me what's going on. 
with you and your dog. You can post pictures, you can post videos, you can let me know what's frustrating you, how you need help. You can share the wins. There are thousands of people in this group who love to help and share the wins with you. So definitely join the group. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button. Once you do, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Thank you for continuing your journey with me through the beginner dog training series. There is going to be another video popping up around here somewhere that is definitely going to help build that bond and relationship between you and your dog. So I definitely recommend you check that out next. Thank you again so much for being here and I will see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.